Dobrodošli u podcast o zdravlju i ljepoti. Danas pričamo o apneji. Dakle, pričamo o tome što nam ometa miran i dobar i kvalitetan san. Sa mnom je danas Peter Lohaus. Doktor, welcome. Today is a very uh, important topic about sleep and what is disturbing our calm sleep. So, what is apnea? Apnea is um, um, a breathing stop mm-hmm. during sleep. Mm-hmm. What happens is that your tongue becomes less uh, tensed, mm-hmm. it falls back, uh, you kind of choke during the sleep mm-hmm. and therefore you wake up, which brings the tension back in your tongue. So the choking is resolvable because the body takes care of it, but uh, you don't have a sufficient quality of sleep. Mm-hmm. So actually it's a breathing disorder mm-hmm. with the effects of poor sleep. That's what happens. So we don't get enough sleep, but if we are sleeping, we don't know if we have it. How can we know if we have apnea? You have enough sleep, but the quality of sleep mm-hmm. is not good enough. And you, some people don't know for years, mm-hmm. but they kind of notice because their spouse Mm-hmm. says that you're uh, snoring. You're snoring. <laughs> yes, it's related to apnea. Mm-hmm. Poor, badly snoring is usually related to apnea. Or they say you have breathing stops. You stop breathing, mm-hmm. uh, which is apnea actually. Or they have nighttime uh, problems and daytime symptoms. That means that during the day they fall asleep or they cannot mm-hmm. concentrate or they're moody, uh, etc. But not every snoring is uh, snoring related to apnea. Not always, no. So sometimes, usually they come for snoring, you test for apnea and sometimes they don't have the apnea. Mm-hmm. Or they have mild mm-hmm. apnea because you can have uh, mild apnea, immediate, mm-hmm. intermediate apnea or severe uh, apnea, which has uh, more consequences. Okay, why do we sleep? Why do we need to have sleep? Why are we dreaming? Explain more. Uh, we are uh, sleeping to restore our body, so uh, actually it's a period mm-hmm. of unconsciousness mm-hmm. which is uh, reversible and in that time uh, all the, the, the bad s- stuff is kind of cleaned from the brain, the cells shrink, so there's more fluid in between the cells, they get rid of the garbage and also there's a, a neuroscientific process taking place that all the information that you collect during the day is kind of reformatted in certain parts of the brain, just mm-hmm. like you're formatting a computer in the, in the old days. Mm-hmm. So those two things uh, are happening. And what happens uh, uh, further is uh, um, yeah, during different stages, those processes take place. And what you are referring to the dream sleep is especially important for that reformatting of information. So you get rid of the information that you don't need and the real important information you keep and is stored at the right places. So we're reformatting and resetting. Yes. Okay, but we have uh, apnea. Why is it important to know it and to solve it? Uh, because if you uh, have it uh, on short term, uh, you will function less the next day. and You will enjoy the, the day less because you're uh, moody and uh, not well rested. Mm-hmm. On the long term, it has uh, an effect on the oxygen in your blood. You get oxidative stress, as they say it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes oxygen drops to below 90% of what it was normal. And that has an effect on the vessels, the vasculature. So you get hypertension, uh, diabetes, stroke. These are all long-term complications of uh, apnea. So it's a serious uh, problem for uh, a big group. Uh, as for example the Netherlands uh, or Croatia. Mm-hmm. It's underdiagnosed and it has consequences mm-hmm. both in terms of health but also in terms of cost, quality of life, quality of life uh, uh, medical care. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have a stroke, it might have started already in the beginning with uh, uh, an apnea which was undiagnosed. Mm-hmm. And then you think, is that really true? That, that's really true. Sometimes they come with uh, a huge amount of apneas which you had for years already. Uh, yes. And how do we diagnose apnea? If you think you have it, Mm -hmm. you measure uh, your sleep quality with uh, um, um, breathing flow, um, electrocardiography, uh, oxygen levels. uh, Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can combine it with brain waves. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. that's an extra type. So you can see when it happens, in which stage of the sleep it happens. If you have enough uh, uh, deep sleep, you can see that on your wave structure. Mm -hmm. So you get a lot of uh, information uh, uh, when you do those measurements. Mm -hmm. And uh, can we uh, now speak more about other sleep disorders? Um, what, what are sleep disorders and how many are there? Uh, um, apnea is one out of six. Mm -hmm. So apnea is, I think, um, uh, very frequent, mm -hmm. together with insomnia, which mm -hmm. is that you cannot sleep uh, and uh, uh, is also uh, something that you can attack and treat. Then there's too much sleep, people mm -hmm. who are uh, uh, sleepy whole day, which is usually a genetic uh, thing. Mm -hmm. There's rhythm disturbances, like uh, jet lag is, mm -hmm. That's, but some people have it, they cannot set the clock uh, in the right way. Then there's uh, um, dream-related uh, disorders, mm -hmm. um, nightmares, etc. And there's movement, some people move. Like uh, twitching or twitch, more? Twitching or they kick, us, they kick themselves awake. So they have the same effect, they, they don't sleep well because they move so much. Sometimes related to Parkinson's disease, etc. So there, there are several uh, uh, sleeping disorders, of which apnea is a breathing disorder and is one. And how do we treat uh, other sleep disorders? Um, uh, usually you have a team, which we have here as well. Uh -huh. uh, insomnia is behavioral therapy a lot of times. And the other are uh, usually medicine, uh, neurologists, pneumologist, ENT surgeon, mm -hmm. uh, usually they are uh, gathered in a group uh, which are, is led by a somnologist, which is a sleep expert. Um, so that's how it's done. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's complicated, then you communicate with each other, what are we going to do for this particular patient. And they, the patient uh, comes to the clinic and then you do the... The, the test. Okay. And then you get a lot of information. Then you know which direction to go. Mm -hmm. And you see the specialist which is, has the most knowledge about that certain uh, sleep disorder. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do the testing uh, look like? Uh, it's, it's brain waves and mm -hmm. counting uh, the amount of brain waves in a certain period. And it's, for example, for apnea, it's the amount of breathing stops or amount of times that you drop under a certain mm -hmm. oxygen level. And you add that up then you get numbers and these numbers are indicative of uh, how severe the disease is and uh, how far you have to go to treat it. And there's different ways of treatment uh, and mild types you treat in a certain way, severe types you treat in a certain way. So how again uh, do we measure sleep disorders? Uh, by uh, uh, what I explained with uh, the breathing flow, mm -hmm. oxygen mm -hmm. levels, mm -hmm. brain waves, which are called polygraphy or polysomnography. Uh, that's, uh, you include uh, the brain waves. So you count certain features of the sleep, you add them all together to get a certain uh, diagnosis and uh, treatment subsequently. And after the treatments, what are the results? Is um, everything uh, back to normal or do you have something that you have to work with uh, the uh, rest some, of your life. Well, sometimes you can. Uh, well, usually it depends on which treatment you do. Which is, um, you have a mask, mm -hmm. which gives positive pressure to blow everything open. For the apnea, you have a surgery, which kind of creates more openness, either in uh, the back of the throat or in the nose. Uh, you have a mandibular device where you bring the jaw forward, uh, strained on the teeth to create more space in the back of the, uh, the, the, the pharynx. Uh, there's different ways, but what you do is after that treatment, you measure again if you're not sure. Uh, so always there's a measurement after the treatment to see if you were treated well enough, because it's that important that you are treated well to avoid the long-term complications and to avoid the, how you feel during the day. Yes. And uh, what can you um, share uh, with our patients uh, with about apnea, or um, how they can, uh, you know? Well, that, that if they think they have it, and there's certain. Uh, um, it's best to come to the clinic. Uh, yes, because it's. I think it's underdiagnosed, mm -hmm. and the, the consequences for a, a nation mm -hmm. are kind of big because in the end. It uh, uh, has a lot of consequences for stroke, uh, vascular disease, diabetes, etc. And it's very simple to test it because one night's sleep with a certain device 
and you know if you have it, uh, yes or no. And it's usually related to overweight, mm -hmm. to age, uh, mm -hmm. kind of women catch up with the guys uh, around the menopause, mm -hmm. and anatomy. If you have small jaw, big tongue, uh, uh, you, know, you know that there's not so much space in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're uh, easier susceptible of being an open hair patient. Mm -hmm. And it happens more for women or for men? Uh, men in the beginning and uh, when around 50 women catch up, then it's okay. about the same. Mm -hmm. And why is it uh, for men harder? <laughs> uh, it's or just anatomy. Usually they have a uh -huh. big tongue, uh, which is kind of uh, getting flat and then it drops down. Mm -hmm. And for women it gets kind of softer and then it collapses based on negative pressure. Uh, that's how they catch up in the end. So it can all be prevented by coming here and being tested? Uh, no, you can test and you can uh, prevent the consequences mm -hmm. of having the apnea by treating it, which is either the surgery, mm -hmm. the mandibular device, which is comfortable, or uh, the, the CPAP mask, uh, the continuous positive airway pressure mask. So let's continue and let's talk about a Somnomed. What is Somnomed? Somnomed is a company in Australia that makes oral devices that bring the jaw forward. Okay. And with the jaw, the tongue that is connected to create more space in the back of the throat. And then during the sleep, uh, your tongue stays forward so you can breathe better, so you're not choking during mm -hmm. your sleep and you have a better quality of sleep because you don't wake up all the time. That is what Somnomet is and it's a company that has many patencies on that equipment. So it's also a high quality uh, oral device and that's how they uh, are in the market. Mm -hmm. But it's, the, it's a company that produces oral devices to treat apnea. That's actually what it is to summarize. And uh, what is the difference and can you explain a MED or CPAP? A CPAP is uh, the mask which is used for uh, treating apnea mm -hmm. and it kind of gives positive pressure and blows everything open but you have to sleep with a mask uh, the whole uh, night. Is it difficult? Sometimes for patients it's difficult and sometimes they get used to it, they get better sleep, they think all right this is good and it, it works very good but the oral device mm -hmm. is kind of uh, an, another way just like surgery is another way to treat the apnea which also works uh, uh, very well and it's sometimes uh, easier for the patient to uh, wear mm -hmm. than the mask. Um, sometimes they don't know that it's there. In the Netherlands it's very common, but here um, I don't see many people at all who are wearing it. And they come for it because they kind of find out that uh, it's there. And it works also very fine. And it, the compliance, that means that they wear it better during the night. Um, whereas it also works fine. But when you have severe apnea, usually you choose for the mask. When you have mild medium, uh, you tend to choose sooner for the oral device to treat the apnea. And uh, which sleep disorders uh, can we treat uh, with MAD? MAD, apnea. Only apnea? Only apnea. Okay. Yeah. Is there a scientific proof for the MAD that helps? Uh, yes. So there is a lot of scientific proof. Okay. Uh, comparative studies, uh, uh, cohorts, but real high quality uh, level studies where they show that MAD is uh, sometimes uh, better accepted, mm -hmm. but also when you compare it for severe apnea that it sometimes works uh, just as well. Uh, the thing is that uh, in, in both cases you have to measure uh, whether uh, the apnea is uh, uh, released, or is, is, is improved. Mm -hmm. And with the CPAP, that's a little bit easier because there's a chip in the device that measures that uh, immediately. With the MAD, you have to kind of test after uh, the patient has the MAD, which uh, is a process to go through. And then you test with the polygraphy or polysomnography whether the uh, apnea has decreased. Mm -hmm. But now also for the uh, uh, MAD, there is a, a movement device which kind of sees whether mm -hmm. you're choking. So also there in that device you can measure uh, without the test whether uh, the, 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 the device works yes or no. So there's, there's a lot of technical developments uh, uh, going on. And in Croatian people, what would you say uh, in percentages uh, that works the best for them? Uh, they, they will not be different than uh, in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. So it's the same kind of population, only here only CPAP is insured, so, okay. uh, uh, and 
the, the people, the, the doctors are used to the CPAP, so everybody has a CPAP. And here, uh, slowly, the MAD is getting more accepted because mm -hmm. people like it. In mm -hmm. the Netherlands, there is uh, a lot of people that use the MAD. And uh, also here, uh, you should expect that that same percentage would like the MAD because the, when they know it, they ask for it. So it's the same. It's just a cultural difference and, and what you know and what is insured, etc., etc. But I think MAD has a long way to go in this country. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, but uh, now we can, you know, call to some action. We can call people or, or invite them to go test themselves uh, and yes. to see yes. if they have, have apnea. Yeah. And if, uh, if you have apnea, there's a possibility to treat with uh, different things. Mm -hmm. So not only CPAP. Mm -hmm. I think it, it, it would be good uh, to uh, uh, introduce the MAD in this country. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, 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 it's proven that it works mm -hmm. and uh, I think people will like it. And there's always the possibility to uh, change to other things like surgery and combine. And or combine. But that's not, usually not necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the, uh, how you test. Yes, but I'm sure that you will do uh, everything that is possible uh, to have the best result for uh, the yes, patient. Yes, in the end it's what works is best. Thank you very much for this uh, conversation. Evo vidjeli ste naravno što sve trebate znati ili trebate provjeriti, a ja vam preporučam da to možete učiniti u poliklinici Lohaus Filipović da biste dakako ostali potpuno zdravi. Vidimo se sljedeći put u našem podcastu. Thank you.